Alright guys, so in this video I want to talk about rest and spread operators. So consider this scenario, how would you accept a variable or arbitrary number of arguments? Let's say we have a function, we're going to call this function pick random. And let's say the purpose of this function is to pick a random number from a given list. Now it's sort of easy if you provide an array of numbers to that function, right? So we could do pick random, and then let's say do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Once you provide an array of numbers, it becomes really easy to extract a random element out of that array. But what if instead of an array, we had an actual list of numbers, right? How would you deal with this scenario? Well, prior to ES6, one of the ways that you would go about it would typically be to use the arguments object. So the arguments object is a built-in local variable that's available in all functions in JavaScript. And the way it looks like is this. So it's basically an object that can be referred to using the arguments keyword. And that's a special reserved keyword in the language. So if you wanted to access, let's say, the first element, you could use the brackets. So you could pretty much treat it like an array. At index 0, we can access the very first element, and in index 1, we could access the second one, and so on. And in fact, it's also possible to reassign values at different indices. So let's say I wanted to overwrite the value of the element that's at index 2, meaning the third element, I could assign a new value to it, like this. And if you console log the arguments object afterwards, you're going to see that we have the new value for that element. Not really something that's advisable, but it's still permissible in JavaScript. Now the arguments object refers to the arguments that were passed to the function. But the important thing to note about it is that the arguments object is actually exactly that. It's an object, but it's not an array. It does look like an array because of the indices, right? We have numerical indices for every single element inside of that object. But it turns out that the arguments object is not an array. It's what's known as an array-like object. So what that means is that you can't actually call array methods on the arguments object. So if you try to do something like arguments.foreach, we could even provide a callback function inside of it, you're going to see that it doesn't actually work. You would get a type error that says that arguments dot for each is not a function, meaning that there's no for each method on the arguments object. Now, just to prove you that the arguments object is not an array, one thing that you could do is you could do console log object prototype prototype to string, and you could call the call method passing the arguments object inside of it. So as you can see right there, it gives us object arguments. Now, if you pass, let's say, just an array, to compare and contrast with that, you're going to see that we get object array. So this right there tells you that the arguments object is not an array. In fact, it's a built-in object of arguments type. And the only semblance that it has with the array is its length property, meaning that you could just easily do console log arguments length. And that's going to give you the number of elements that you pass inside of that function. So if we added more elements, we're going to get 6. You add another one, we're going to get 7. That's basically the number of arguments that you pass inside of that function. So as I said, the arguments object is not actually an array. It's an array-like object. But what if you wanted to treat the arguments object as an array? What if you wanted to apply array methods onto it? Well, in ES5, you pretty much just had one single option. So one of the ways to go about it would be to basically apply the slice method on the arguments. And the way you would do that is you would basically call the slice method of the array prototype directly. The way to do it would basically be to call that method using the call method. Now at this point I owe you an explanation of what the call method refers to because we've already seen it with the object prototype to string just a couple of seconds ago. Basically what the call method does it's a method that's available in every function in JavaScript, and it basically allows you to invoke the function with a given this object, as well as the arguments list. So in this example, instead of calling the pick random function directly using the parentheses and then the list of arguments, we could have also used the call method of the pick random function. And then the very first argument that we provide would be the object that's going to become the this object inside of this function. So just to make this clear, let's do console log this. 
And uh, this keyword, as I mentioned in previous videos, is basically a special keyword that refers to the current or calling object inside of any function or method. The this object, what it refers to, is going to be whatever we pass as the very first argument to the call method. Now in this example, it doesn't really matter what this object becomes, so we could easily pass null or we could even pass undefined. Now the thing to note is that if I open the dev tools, you're going to see that the console log actually gives us the window object. Whenever you invoke the call method and you pass either null or undefined, as the first argument, that argument is going to be replaced with the window object. Now, if you pass an actual object, let's say an object literal, you're going to see that we actually get an object when we console log this inside of the function. So just one of the things to keep in mind. Now, if you remember in episode four, we talked about classes and we had an example of the premium account class. Well, in fact, we use the constructor function in order to achieve that in ES5. But basically we had a function of premium account that was accepting a balance as well as the number of bonus points. And then if you recall, the very first thing that we did inside of that function constructor is we basically called the parent account class with the call method and then we passed this object as well as the balance. So in fact what we did is we basically invoked the account function using the call method and then we pass the this object that's basically an instance of premium account class or method and then we also pass the balance so in instance we basically invoke the parent constructor function using the given object as well as the balance so in fact this is similar to calling super in ES6 passing the balance and this is exactly what we did on the right side when I wrote the example in ES6 okay so I hope that makes sense. Now, this is one of the ways to extract the arguments as an array. In fact, if you did console log, and let's remove the first one. If you did console log args, you're going to see that this is going to give us an array of all the arguments that we passed inside of that function. And just for fun, let's just change them. Let's say we had 9, 0, 12, 45, 7, 1. You're going to get the exact same elements in the same order. Now another option to get hold of the arguments object as an array would be to use array from method and then you could basically pass your arguments inside of it. So the array from method was added in ES6. It creates a new array object from any array like or iterable object. So as I mentioned before, the arguments object is actually not an array, it's an array-like object. What the array from method allows you to do is to basically recreate an array from that object. If you did console log args, as you can see, that's going to give us an array of all the function arguments that we passed. And in fact, we don't need to use the call method anymore. We could put it back to whatever we had before, which is basically just a simple function invocation. And then lastly, instead of using the array from method, you could simply use the new spread operator in order to extract the elements of the arguments object into an array. So the way that it would look like is you would use the square brackets and then you would put the three dots and then your arguments object. So the three dots right there on the left, they are what's referred to as the spread operator or the spread syntax. So what this basically allows you to do is it allows us to expand the arguments object into array elements and those elements are passed individually instead of this new array that's being assigned to the arguments variable. So once we have that, you're free to call any array method onto arguments. So you could call for each, you could call map, or you could call any other method, whatever the case might be. And I'm going to change from var to let, but let's say now we got hold of the arguments. So how do we return a random element out of that array? Well, you might be familiar with math random function. And basically that method returns a random number between zero inclusive and one exclusive. That number is going to be a decimal number. So in fact, let's do console log of that. In this particular example, it's gonna give us this number. So it's gonna be between zero inclusive, meaning that it could be zero, and one exclusive, meaning that it can get as close to one as possible, but it's never actually going to be one. Now, if we multiply that random number by the length of arguments that we pass inside of the function, in other words, if we do that multiplied by arguments dot length, 
That's basically going to give us a random number between 0 and up to, but not including 6. And the very last thing that we would do is we would basically call math floor function on that result. Whenever you call the floor method, it's basically going to round down the value. So let's say you have, you know, 5.7, that's going to be rounded down to 5. If you have 3.2, that's going to be rounded to the nearest integer would be 3. So basically it goes down to the closest integer. Now what this expression is going to do, it's basically going to give us a random integer between 0 and 5. And this is essentially going to be a random index. We could use that index in order to access the element of the arguments object. So in fact, in this case, we don't need to work with arguments as an array. We could work with it as an object. So we could basically assign the result of that expression to the index, and then we could simply return arguments index. So let's do for let i equals zero, i is uh, less than 10, let's increment i, okay, and then let's do console log of big random. That's gonna give us 10 different results, as you can see on the right, but we could also further simplify this so because we use the index variable only once, we could simply put the result inside of the square brackets like so. And this is going to work also. Now the only disadvantage is that this approach cannot work with arrow functions. So one of the things that I didn't mention in the video about arrow functions is that the arrow functions don't allow you to access the arguments object inside of them. So if we had an arrow function, let's convert this function declaration to a function expression. So let's do let's say constant big random, we're basically going to assign this function to a variable. Now this is still going to work. Let's just check the dev tools. Yep, no errors. But if you change that to an arrow function, right? And let's try to do console log arguments. Well, you're gonna see that this doesn't actually execute and it gives us an error. You're gonna see a reference error that says, arguments is not defined, which basically means that you're not allowed to access the arguments object inside of the arrow function. So how would you go about this in this example using the arrow function? Well, you could use the rest operator and basically it looks exactly the same as the spread operator. It's three dots and then you could put arguments. Basically what this is going to do is it's gonna take all of the arguments that you provide to the pick random function, right? And it's basically going to stuffle them down inside of this arguments variable. And that arguments variable is going to become an array that holds all of the elements that you just passed to that function. So if we do console log of arguments, you're going to see that this basically gives us an array of all the elements that were passed inside of the function. So just to reiterate, the rest operator, it basically allows us to represent any number of function arguments as an array. So in fact, we could pass more elements or we could pass less. No matter what the number of elements becomes, they're always going to be represented as this arguments variable as an array. And in fact, you don't necessarily have to use arrow functions with the rest operator. You could use normal functions. So if we go back to our pick random function, it will switch back to a function declaration. If you console log arguments, that's going to be the arguments object. But but you could very easily mask it using the rest operator. So if it did three dots arguments, and then you console out the arguments, that's basically going to override the reference to the arguments object. So you're no longer going to get the arguments object as before. You're actually going to get an array of all the elements that you passed. And that's because of the rest operator that we just applied. Now that's sort of like a quick introduction to rest and spread. In the next video, we're going to take a closer look at both of those. And we're going to go through a bunch of different examples and use cases that you could actually encounter yourself. So I hope you stick around and I hope to see you in the next video.